So a lot of our favorite bullet journal creators are using materials that, while lovely, might be a little bit out of the price range for some folks. Fair. But we don't want that to hold you back from bullet journaling. We want you to be able to be creative and productive and get things done, all the good stuff. So that begs the question, can we set up a bullet journal for 20 US dollars or less? This was the amount that was voted on by the Instagram fam, so thank you guys for helping us out there. And if you're wondering what 20 US dollars looks like in other currencies, here we have a summary of some of them. Of course I can't include all of the currencies of the world, but hopefully that gives you a kind of ballpark estimate of what we're talking about here. I think that's enough jabber, let's go shopping. When I say I'm setting up a bullet journal with $20, I need to buy the journal, buy any of the writing utensils, and buy any of the decorative stuff. So, a little shopping list. Let's go see what we can get though. For our shopping escapades today, I am going to the cheapest place I know, which is Kmart. Uh, I know that they don't have Kmart in all places of the world, but hopefully you guys can find some kind of cheap store alternatives. Here's a list of some that I've been recommended on the screen for various places, but Hopefully that helps. We don't have those here though, so. If we're gonna start a journal, we're gonna need a journal. Thankfully, the journal selection at Kmart is actually quite extensive, but sadly, the journals mainly have lines, and I'm not really about that. I want a dot grid notebook. Thankfully though, they did have one dot grid notebook in stock in this khaki color. I do believe they stock other ones, possibly in other places, but this will do for today. Next, we're going to need some writing utensils. We're going to need to be able to actually write in and draw in our bullet journal. When picking pens, I'm very much thinking about what will or won't bleed and ghost in the notebook. Because the notebook has thinner paper, I'm probably going to steer clear of things that are particularly inky, and certainly steer clear of anything alcohol-based, like Sharpies or artist markers. After this, we need embellishments. And while there is quite a range at Kmart that we could, in theory, use in our journal, we want to make these things last. So I'm opting in for some craft paper bags. Just because they're bags doesn't mean we can't use them as embellishment. But of course, I'm now going to need something to stick them in with, so we could either use a double-sided glue tape roller or a glue stick. My preference is for the glue tape roller. Also a worthwhile investment, we're probably going to need some scissors. I do technically have scissors at home though, so I'm not going to buy these. And because I like my lines straight, we're also going to need a ruler, which I think that this math set would be pretty good for. Depending on what you want to use in your journal, you might want to grab some correction tape, maybe some sticky notes, but I think this is a pretty good haul for today. We got the goods. Surely we could chuck a Starbucks on there. Oh uh, yes. So this is our little haul of items that we got from my budget store, Kmart. We have a glue tape runner, some craft paper bags for some kind of decoration stuff, a variety of different pens, and also a math set because it came with a pen, and an eraser, and like a compass with a pencil end on it. And there's three sets of rulers in here, so that's pretty exciting. Of course, we also needed to get the journal, because you're not going to set up a bullet journal without a journal. This is the only dot grid notebook that I had available, so maybe not my favorite color, but it is still pretty cute. Opening up the math set, and you can see here are the little rulers in there, so we've got a nice little 15 centimeter one. We've got a nice circular one, which is pretty cool. You can do some like, you know, semi-circle kind of things. And, oh, two triangles. Excellent, I thought there were only three rulers. Maybe the protractor doesn't count. Good for shape work. And I like how they all click back in here because they've all got their like little space held in place. Pretty nifty design. And then you can open up the top and then we've got all these little bits. So the pencil lid, the little eraser, pen, the compass, nifty. The brown paper bags you could probably get cheaper somewhere else, but I just thought they might be a nice decorative element for the planner, and then of course I needed the glue tape to be able to stick them in. If this glue tape works out, I might start getting it for my journal because it was super cheap compared to the one that I usually buy. Another supply that I have, which I didn't grab in our haul today because I already have it, are the Crayola Super Tip Markers. And these are an excellent marker to get if you're on a budget because they are super cheap. I have the 20 pack, which is about $12 New Zealand or roughly $7.30 US, which would push us over our budget. But you can also get a 10 pack, which is only $6.99 New Zealand. So taking the 10 markers from this pack and including the supplies that we got at Kmart, that brings our total to approximately 1770 US. So well and truly under the $20 budget. Now you will have seen from the footage that there were fine liners available, but I opted in for ballpoint pens. And we're gonna do a pen test in this journal to show you why. 
Having a look at the notebook though, this one is 80 GSM in its paper, meaning that it's thinner than what I typically use, which means that the supplies that I'm going to use in here do have to be different. Opening up and flipping to the back of the notebook, we're going to be doing a pen test page, just so I can show you which supplies would work in here and which ones you probably don't want to use. As we typically do for the pen tests, for any of the pens that you typically colour in with, I've gone over several times with the marker, so you'll see for those four dot grid boxes, going from left to right we have once over, twice over, three and then four times. For the Zig Clean coloured dot marker, I've done varying sizes of dots, going from least amount of pressure to most. I will also note that all of the pens that I'm putting on this pen swatch can be found linked in the description box below, along with all the other materials that we're actually using in this journal setup. In terms of the pens that I'll be using, those ones I'm swatching at the bottom here, so the Crayola Super Tips and the Unco Ballpoint pens. If we flip back a page, we can see that we have some shadowing. I think once you write on this page it won't be very noticeable, but you can see there is some there. And then if we instead flip back to have a look at ghosting and bleeding, so as to be expected, the Sharpie and the Line Painter totally bleed, but they are alcohol based, so that makes a lot of sense. They bleed in essentially everything. But what you can also see with a good chunk of the pens we have up here, we also have some bleed through on these. So in particular, we have bleed through on the Uniball Air Micro, which also makes sense because it pretty much almost bleeds in 160 GSM, and this is only 80. The Karen marker is particularly juicy, so that one has some bleed through as well. The Pilot Sign is also kind of juicy, usually not a problem in 160 GSM, but this is 80. You'll also note that anywhere where we've gone over multiple times with our colouring pens, those ones do have some bleed through, especially when we get to the four passes over. Essentially everything ghosts, apart from the HB pencil, but when it comes to the pens we got from Kmart, the Anko brand pens or those ballpoint pens, the ghosting on these is way less noticeable. And that's why, if I was setting up in this journal, I'd be opting in for ballpoint pens with gel ink. Not particularly fluid gel ink either because as you can see with the Ink Joy pen up here, we do also get some pretty heavy ghosting on that one with a potential of bleed through because that gel is a lot more liquid. These ones down the bottom though, much more viscous, so they don't seep into the page. As mentioned though, we're not gonna be using the ones up the top here, that was just for a comparison point. The ones down the bottom, those are the ones we're gonna use. In terms of the setup of the journal, I'm not going to show you all of it just because it's not really the purpose of today's video. Really we're looking for a proof of concept. Can we set up a bullet journal with 20 US dollars or less? If you would like to see the full setup for this one though, I am planning on releasing it later this year as we think about setting up our next bullet journals. You will have seen though, I used the double sided tape to stick the first page to that inside cover paper just because I didn't want to risk trying to separate them so that I could actually use the paper because it's not super good for journals to rip apart the glue, and while I'm okay with doing that in some of my more expensive journals, I was a little bit worried about this one and it holding up to that kind of force. On the first page here though, we are setting up a grid spacing guide, as you can see, and the spacing in this one is actually the same as the A5 Archer and Olive journals that I typically use. Because that page is stuck to the inside cover paper though, we don't get a good feel for how ghosting looks in this journal. So if we skip ahead to the next spread, you can see we do have some ghosting from that initial page, but once we start writing on it, it's actually not going to be too noticeable. And this is because we were sensible about which pens we're using. As long as we're using things that aren't too inky, they're not going to dump too much ink onto the page and cause a lot of ghosting and bleeding, we're going to be just fine. When it comes to ghosting and bleeding in our journals, we need to pay attention to not just the notebook and the thickness of the paper there, but also the materials that we're using in it. So like I said, in this case, avoiding fine liners and avoiding going over multiple times with our coloured markers. If we do get any bleed through though, that craft paper is going to come in handy, because we can use it to cover up any bled through sections. Plus, it's also nice for a decorative element, and it's oftentimes cheaper and more useful than stickers. Jumping to our next spread, you can also see that we can use the pens that we got to do some pretty cool hand lettering too. The word before here is done with what's called foligraphy, or fake calligraphy, where effectively you just write out in simple monoline cursive, and then go back over it and thicken the downstrokes by just adding in some extra bulk in that area. You can also do calligraphy style lettering with the Crayola Super Tips. Because they come to a point, it's actually quite easy to get a thin upstroke 
and a thick downstroke with them. It is worthwhile mentioning that if you're using a ballpoint pen and you have a pretty heavy hand, like I do sometimes, you might get some ridging from your pen on the other side of your page. If this bothers you, you do have to try and make sure that you're maintaining a lighter pressure, but a lot of people actually quite like this. It gives their journal that kind of used feeling. Hopefully you can see though that our journal setup is coming along well and we are making good use of the supplies that we got in our little $20 haul. I was actually pretty impressed with this notebook. It stood up fairly well to the things that I was putting in it, but as said, this is probably because I was very mindful of which materials I was using. If you were looking to start a bullet journal and not break the bank with it, my general advice would be shop around a bit, find the stores that have the supplies you're looking for for the cheapest deals. Make sure to consider what items are actually going to be essentials. You don't need every single pen under the sun to get started. Consider the items you're getting in terms of the number of ways that you can use them, or how long you can use them for. For instance, when we chose to get craft paper rather than stickers. With that in mind, it's also good to consider, do we have any cheaper alternatives for decoration? For instance, us using paper bags rather than buying specialty craft paper. You can also use other things for decoration, like wrapping papers or packaging materials. Those kind of things can make for quite cute decoration. Another way you can save money when you're just getting started is instead of buying cheaper materials, just buy less materials in general. To start a bullet journal, all you really need is a notebook and a pen. And you can do a lot of things with a good black pen. But if you think that bullet journaling is something that you're going to want to stick with for a while, I do encourage you to write yourself a bullet journaling supplies wish list. If you are looking for some ideas of what to put on that list, we do have a bullet journaler's gift guide in the description box below. But here you can see the layouts that we set up in this budget-friendly bullet journal. Hopefully that goes to show that yes, we can set up a bullet journal for $20 or less, and we only use two out of the 10 Crayola Super Tip colors, and only two of the colored gel pens as well. So there's ample opportunity for working with more color palettes when it comes to the monthly setups. Do not let your supplies hold you back from getting into bullet journaling if that's something that you want to do. Of course, this is just one example of a way that you can set up a bullet journal. So if you are looking for more start of journal inspiration, be sure to check out the playlist we have here. Or if you are now looking for monthly setup inspiration, the playlist at the bottom is where it's at. As always, team, thank you for watching and until next time. Bye. Who the heck decides to get a cold drink when it's like winter? I do. Ha. <laughs>